Hello everyone and welcome to the video. And today we're going to be talking about a dual scythe build that I made. Uh, this build centers around arcane, so it is a bleed build pretty much. It's a pretty cool build. Uh, so if you guys like this build, just make sure to drop a like on the video as well as a sub to the channel. I would really appreciate it and that would help me out so much. Another thing I wanted to mention was that if you guys have any trouble getting any of the items for the build, or if you just need runes in general, you can go to aoa.com. They have everything in the game that you can pick up for very cheap. Uh, you could also use code Seraph. I'll put the link in the description. You can get 3% off. But that's pretty much it for everything. So let's get right into the video. So the first thing we always talk about is the gear of the build. So for this build specifically, we are using two grave sites. Uh, for me, they are both occult. And for the first one, which is the one we are going to be using the weapon art on, we have Sword Dance. The reason I'm using Sword Dance is because it's a pretty awesome Ash of War for scythes, just because it can give you a lot more range. And scythes in general just have a ton of range. As you guys also may notice, my scythes are only plus 20 and plus 19. This is because I started a new game and pretty much ran out of crafting materials for it. As for our seal, we are using the Dragon Communion seal. This is just because it scales the best with Arcane. And then we have a Pairing Dagger just for pairing in PvP. For the fashion of the build, we are using the Royal Remains Helmet, Chest, and then we have the Knight's Cavalry Gauntlets and Greaves. This is just for purely fashion. You could swap these out. This is not optimized for the build. However, in my opinion, it looked really good. As for the Talismans, we have the Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which greatly increases our physical damage negation. We have the Lord of Blood Exultation, which increases our damage when there is blood loss. And we have the Claw Talisman. This increases jump attacks and the Shard of Alexander, which boosts the power of skills. For our Wondrous Physic, we have the Opaline Hard Tier and the Crimson Tier, which increases our HP regeneration. And we also have the Uplifting Aromatic, which increases our attack power and gives us a bubble, which is very useful. As for the stats of the build, we are level 150. We have 50 Vigor, 15 Mind, 35 Endurance, 17 Strength, 14 Dexterity, 14 Intelligence, 15 Faith, and 69 Arcane. For the incantations of the build, we are only using a few. One of them is Flame Grant Me Strength. We then have Swarm of Flies, followed by Blood Flame Talons, and then Blood Boon and Rotten Breath. These give a nice little mix, and if you need to do a little bit more damage in PvP or PvE, these are going to be perfect for the build. So now I'm just going to talk about some substitutions that you guys can make, as well as how you're going to use this build to its maximum potential. So one of the things I mentioned before was that I put on the Sword Dance Ash of War onto my scythe. This is an amazing Ash of War for Reapers in general, so I would definitely recommend using this one. There are a couple other ones, like the Fire one that you can throw on. However, that would split it with Fire Damage, and it would decrease the damage of your weapon overall. Uh, another thing is that the Bleed procs don't happen as often since I have Dual Occult. You are not able to put Seppuku on, unfortunately, so you cannot increase it that way. So the only way to get consistent Blood Loss procs, pretty much almost every time you swing, would be to make them Blood Infused instead of Occult. However, when you do that, you are losing out on a lot of damage, so it's kind of something that you're going to have to compromise with. You either get more damage per swing, or more consistent blood proc and bleed buildups. So it's entirely up to you guys what you want to go with it. For me, I ran a cult, and mine aren't even maxed, so you can easily increase the damage of this. Even if you did go with the blood infusion, it is entirely up to you guys. So as you guys will see in some of these PvP clips, the main points of the build and the main strong suits of the build are the jumping attacks and the Ash of War. They give a ton of damage with the jump attacks, especially with the claw rune. Blood loss does build up pretty quickly as well, especially if they were infused with blood and not a cult. And also the weapon art of the scythe gives you a ton of range. And overall, the attacks are very good for PvP. I was able to win very consistently in PvP with it. And uh, overall, I had a lot of fun with this build. It's very fun to use. And it's pretty good too. It also has some decent survivability just because of the talismans that I'm using as well as wondrous physic that I have. So you do get some pretty solid survivability. However, if you didn't want that and you want a little bit more damage, you can easily substitute out the Defensive Talisman and switch out the um, the Wondrous Physic for a couple other things as well if you wanted to be more damage oriented, and that is perfectly fine. As for the buffs before a fight, pretty much all you're going to be doing is Flame Grant Me Strength. This increases our physical damage, and since all of this is pretty much physical damage, uh, you are going to be getting a nice little boost as well as you can throw on the Uplifting Aromatic multiple times during a fight if you need more survivability. And you just pop the Wondrous Physic right after you hit Flame Grammy Strength. So overall, I had a lot of fun with this build. I thought the fashion and the entire theme of the build was very cool. It kind of has the Grim Reaper kind of vibes, and it was a lot of fun to use, especially in PvP. 
I was able to, like I said before, I was able to win consistently, and it was a lot of fun, and I, I honestly enjoyed the build a little bit more than I've enjoyed other builds in the past, but that's pretty much it for today's video, so if you guys have any specific builds you want to see in the future, just make sure to comment them below, and the comment with the most likes, or if I just see a build idea that I really like, I will make it, uh, but that's pretty much it for today's video, so thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you next time.